Now, Britain's most decorated Olympian, Sir Chris Hoy, says that Team GB's cyclists are unlikely to repeat the successes of Beijing and London uh, next time round. He spoke to me a little bit earlier today when he came by to promote a scheme to get more of us on two wheels. So far, one and a half million people have taken part, and Sir Chris is hoping more will join in this time. I started by asking him why the campaign is so important to him. For a lot of people who maybe haven't ridden their bikes for a few years, uh, the thought of getting back on a bike with cars, buses, you know, general traffic around it can be a little bit intimidating. So it's an ideal opportunity if you've not ridden for a while to dust the bike down, get the chain oiled, bring it down and have a shot. And it's for people of all ages, all abilities, um, you know, that you'll get the odd pro rider coming down to sort of say hello as well. So it's, it's just a really fun day and it, it hopefully kickstarts that interest in cycling. And in the last seven years, uh, I think 1.5 million people together with British Cycling and Sky, they've, they've managed to inspire one and a half million people to, to get on their bikes. And there has been a massive surge in interest in cycling, not least because of the success of the likes of you on the track and people like Bradley Wiggins and Mark Cavendish on the road. But there are certain types who are doing better than others. I mean, you have the mammals, the middle-aged men in Lycra <laughs> who are going for it. And what you do get on the flip side is a lot of women who perhaps want to ride bikes, but they're a bit concerned about getting in fast groups with men. They're a bit unsure about whether there'll be other women to ride with. Do you agree I, with that? I think that was the case. I think it's changing very quickly just now. I think people are realizing it's not just about a certain demographic, it's for everybody. Um, no matter what your age, gender, ability, um, you know, you can enjoy cycling, but there's women only specific rides like the Breeze um, Network. You know, there's, there's rides if you don't want to be Jump, uh, tr chuck straight in the deep end with uh, you know, a group of experienced cyclists, and you want to maybe just do it with other female riders. You can do that, but you know, the cycling clubs are really welcoming. Welcoming now, they have you know sections for all types of people, um, and you know, I think it's great to see lots of women out on the bikes. People like Laura Trot, Vicky Pendleton, Nicole Cook, Lizzie Armitstead, they're they're figureheads for female cycling, and they've shown that it's not all about the boys, and that the women can win uh, medals too. It's interesting you mention uh, Laura Trot then there. At the recent World Championships in Paris, she well, achieved our best uh, medal by getting a silver, which is not what British cycling is used to. So given that with you in the team, we were dominant in Beijing, we were dominant in London, how's it looking for Rio at the Olympics next year? Well, it's, I think to expect the same level of success from the last two games is maybe not unrealistic, but it's, it's, it's not likely put it that way. Um, I think the team aren't in the position they'd like to be in right now. You know, a year to go to the Olympic Games, you'd like to be already showing some sort of form that's that's hinting towards um, gold medal success. Certain events we are, you know, getting in the right direction. The men's team pursuit has made massive improvements in the last year. Women's team pursuit, they're up against it now. You know, they have been so dominant for so long. They've been the ones that everybody else has been pitching at. And now the Australians have really kind of upped their game. But it's it's sport, you know, that's what makes sport exciting because if one team or one country dominated all the time, it would get boring. Not for us as the team that are winning, <laughs> but it's great when you're doing that. But it's, you know, that's what it's about. I think I wouldn't expect seven or eight gold medals from the British team, but I would expect a number of medals and hopefully maybe at least two or three gold medals. From a personal point of view, maybe you bowed out at, at the right time. And I know that you have switched from two wheels to four. Just tell us briefly about that. Yeah, well, it's it's more of a hobby. It started out as a hobby. I used to just do track days in, in a, a road track car um, mm -hmm. at the end of each cycling season. And then I had this opportunity to start racing uh, racing cars. And initially it was through the Radical SR1 Cup. It was a, a novice race series. And then with Nissan um, as their ambassador for their Olympic partnership, I've been given this opportunity to try and aim to compete at the uh, 24 hours of Le Mans next year. So I'm competing in the European Le Mans series this year. Yeah. And then next year, the aim is to do the full 24 hours. And uh, yeah, big challenge, very exciting. I mean, I absolutely love it. Um, you know, I'm still learning massively all the time. You know, literally every time you get in the car, you learn new things and gain new experience. But it's, it's a lot of fun. It is. You just yeah. got to stay awake. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Chris, thank you so much. It's lovely to see you. Thank you very much.